On a perfect autumn day, the Russian countryside is one of the most beautiful places in the world. This is the true Russia, the Russia of Pushkin and Tolstoy. It is also where Vladimir Putin comes to burnish his image as a muscular backwoodsman. In the interests of good taste, I have decided to keep my shirt on. I've come here to try and understand why it is that Russians find it so difficult to change, and why 20 years after the collapse of communism, they have turned their back on democracy and embraced Putin's new autocracy. Cool. When Pavel Vertinsky was a child, his parents fled the Soviet Union for freedom in the West. 16 years ago, he came back, thinking that Russia could and would change, that it would embrace democracy and become a modern European country. 16 years on, he has given up. I think it could have gone right if the whole population was replaced. Not whole, but two-thirds of the population. The problem Concluding is... that his fellow Russians really prefer an autocrat, a good czar. Russians like a ruler who rules directly. Let's say a small town, there is a problem. Putin flies in and fixes the problem, and it is uh, shown on TV, and Russians just love this style of management. It's a, it explo a bad mix of surf mentality and uh, hooligan from the steppes. Someone who roams these vast plains burning things. So when you combine uh, slave mentality and uh, warrior mentality, you get Russian. <laughs> Do you think this place will ever change? So, yes, I'm pretty optimistic. Contrary to popular belief, I'm a I great optimist. Changed, there will be either, uh, an either the sun will explode or a big black hole will suck it all in. That may sound rather extreme, but when you live in Russia, you cannot help but feel there is so much potential here, so little fulfilled. It would be hard to find a better example of this than the village of Budashir. Its name means the future. But all of Budashir's glories are in its past. What's happening here is happening in thousands of villages across Russia. Rural life all over the world is dying. But the difference in Russia is what is killing it. This was the village club. This is where they would have held their dances, their parties, their concerts. Looks like this place is still used by some people. But judging by the collection of empty vodka bottles, it's the local drunks. As I step outside, one of them comes up to meet me. It's barely midday, but Misha has already been hitting the bottle for hours. He's only 53, much younger than Vladimir Putin. But on average, Russian men only live to the age of 60. I don't have any friends, he says. All my friends are dead. From what? Or what else kills people here in Mother Russia? As we walk through the village, the signs of decay are all around. Twenty years after communism collapsed, people here still seem incapable of building anything new. The village shop has closed because there's no one sober enough to run it. The same with the once thriving dairy farm. At the far end of the village lives a Russian rarity. An old man. Viktor Matreyev is 71. He lives alone with only his dog for company. Viktor recently lost his wife. He's happy at the rare prospect of visitors. A chance for a chat and the excuse for a lunchtime tipple. Здоровья. 
Is it good? Oh, is it good? Oh. Eight people died in our village from this. They say you can clean windows with this stuff. Why, why do people drink so much? I suppose our village is not the only one. The youth don't want to work. The elderly can't. Most people don't want anything, just shot after shot. Has it, has it always been like this here or has it got worse? For people not to drink, there has to be order. You have to keep a person occupied with a job, otherwise he will be occupied with this. Nobody gives it down what happens to this village. You want to steal? Steal. Don't want to steal? Kill. That's how it is here now. There is a deep yearning here for stability and security. They long for the old certainties and for a good Tsar like Mr. Putin to tell them what to do. Far to the south, in the heart of Moscow, a very different group of Russians is also looking for instruction. Yes, I know what this looks like. But believe it or not, this is a classroom. Pole dancing may be part of the curriculum, but the objective here is much more serious. Hence all the note-taking. These women are here to learn how to catch a husband. A rich one. Money is very important. You have to take care of the family, your wife and children. You have to provide for their future, so money is very important. Feminism is a poison. I don't understand where it came from, and I hope it ends soon. A normal woman cannot be a feminist. And what if they fail to find a husband? What do you mean if I don't find a husband? Of course I will. I am going through training after all. I will know how to do everything. And she's not kidding. What happens next? <laughs> we'll have to leave to your imagination. But can this seriously be what women need to find a good husband? In Russia, women are very motivated to get a man of high social status, and it is difficult because it is a very competitive. There are a very small number of rich men and a huge number of poor men. Russia has no middle class. Any working man in Europe is a potentially normal husband. It is not the same in Russia. The attitudes of young women like this, their almost fanatical desire to find a rich husband, shows just how different Russia still is. Where a few have a lot, and a lot have very little. And where, despite appearances, most are still deeply conservative and still prefer to have a powerful man in charge at home and in the Kremlin. If anybody should be kicking against the system here, then surely it will be members of Russia's biggest biker gang, the Night Wolves. <laughs> it's party night at their compound on the outskirts of Moscow. And once again, I'm following in the footsteps, or rather tire tracks, of Vladimir Putin. In his latest PR stunt, the Russian Prime Minister went riding with these supposedly bad boys. But the rebellion here is superficial. Despite the leather and beards, the drink they're sipping is nothing more than hot tea. This is about being Russian and proud of it. We took the appearance from America, but we are different. We have our own face and our own culture. 
We want Russian bike culture to have its own traditions and own roots. Those roots are in Russia's glorious past, like its victory over the Nazis in World War II. The rock music here may be Western, the bikes Japanese. But it doesn't matter, because it's all happening under a Russian flag. Putin's political genius has been to give Russians back their sense of national pride, dignity and uniqueness. The reason Russia finds it so difficult to escape its past is because so few people here really wanted to.